Testing. Testing. Is this uh, is my audio working? Is my audio working? Can't tell. Oh. I guess it is. Uh, okay, so I'm trying out some different, uh, slightly different setup than we normally use. Um, couldn't really get everybody here tonight to stream. Everybody had stuff going on, so I just wanted to test out a new streaming device that we got. And I wanted to try a slightly different setup, something where we could change between cameras very easily. So. I can just change between my overhead GoPro and my GH4. So it seems to be working here. And my computer's not slowing down too much, which is good. You guys need to let me know if my audio is significantly unsynced. So let's see, what did I want to talk about tonight? So we got some Nelson bodies on the table here. I'm going to go over these a little bit. And you can see that it's mostly, mostly an assortment of Bushmasters right here. We got a, a very early skirmish kit on the top here. And this is a single single arm breech drop Nelson. It's unibody. We can see on the top of the sight rail here, there's no V cut, no V notch cut in it for siding down the barrel. Other things we can notice on this is that it has this knurled front screw, which is, I believe, the first product that Colin Thompson actually We also have a unique bolt in this. It almost looks like a howdy bolt, but it's non-adjustable. So kind of don't think it is a howdy bolt. I'm not really sure what bolt it is. Next in the lineup here, we have another Bushmaster body. This is another unibody. The barrel is non-removable. This one has the V-notch cut in the sight rail. It also has the line of size screws on the side, and it's been sanded a very small amount on the front of the pump here to kind of change the, to kind of give the sight notch some contrast. So flip on my other camera, and we can see right here, there's a little bit of a, little bit, it's been sanded a very small amount, which when you're looking down the barrel through the sight notch, it actually stands out. It's probably hard to see. But... So you guys, let me know if my sound's significantly off here. I have a lav on my chest. So I'm not using my shotgun mic. And uh, I have the audio going. Damn. Actually, I don't even have my lav plugged in. Okay, let me, let me plug my lab in here. Let's see if this changes the audio. Okay, so now I have my lab plugged in. Hopefully that's slightly better audio. Let me make sure we actually got my microphone. Yeah, cool, we got my, I think we got my lab connected now. Hopefully the audio is slightly better now. Um, let's see, so back to these Nelson bodies. I can just change my view here and we go into my GoPro. So now we're on the GoPro again. 
we went over this very early line of size skirmish body. It's a slightly longer barrel. You can see this one is probably, actually I think I have a ruler right here. Let's see. There we go. I got a tape measure. Let me know about my audio if anybody can make it synced up or if it sounds okay. So, all right, measuring the barrel on this single pump arm skirmish. And I don't actually know for sure that this body was sold as a skirmish body. Could have been sold as And I think my GoPro battery just died, so I'm going to change my GoPro battery out. It's going to take a second. Looks like I didn't need to change my GoPro battery. Just timed out or something. Weird. Okay. All right. So, anyways, looks like my GoPro is glitching out. Let's unplug this one. Let's see if it helps it at all. All right, looks like my GoPro or my uh, one of my streaming devices got too hot and froze up. So that's great. Let's see. Fantastic. Hmm. I don't really know what to do about that. But anyway, I guess I'll just continue where I was. So the next body that we have here is, and then I might try turning the GoPro back on in a minute here. All right, so the next body we have here is a, it's a black Lapco Spirit. This is a rental gun. It's got a Wintech frame. It has a blemmed rail on it that says the gray ghost, but ghost is obviously not finished there. Uh, unique thing about this is that it is obviously a really messed up rental body and it has black anodizing. It has a retained spring with what would normally be recognized as a Revline pump handle over it. So we can see there's the retained spring and we can also see that it has a stepped barrel on it. So this is a bore drop, it uses a spirit bolt, which is, which a bore drop means that your ball is falling directly into the bore and not into the breech. On a breech drop such as this body right here would fall into the breech and then your shorter bolt would push it into the bore. But in a bore drop, it has a longer nose on the bolt, so the end of the bolt is actually already in the bore and it stays in the bore the entire time. Uh, another example of a bore drop would be a Bushmaster. So Actually, this one is a Bushmaster. This one's a bore drop Bushmaster. Um, but this one right here, this is a AGS body, Adventure Gang Supplies. This one is a breech drop. So you can see that the pump arm notch screw at the furthest point forward lines up with the actual breech. So let's try my GoPro again now. Let's see if it wants to come back online. Does not want to come back. Oh, Shoot, there we go. All right, cool. GoPro's back online. I hope. 
and uh, that never works again. So you guys need to let me know if my audio is working or if it's not. Because I have no idea if it is. So I guess I can put something on sleep. All right, sounds like it's still working. All right, so looking at the GoPro view again, next in line we have another Slightly early Bushmaster. Again, this is a four drop and another unibody here. This one is a Bushmaster body set up with a Bray Ghost receiver ASA and bottom line ASA. This is a valve body to an eighth inch uh, MPT out, so standard fitting size. And this is an earlier Ghost frame where it has the Bray Ghost engraved right here. See if I can get that a little bit closer to the GoPro so it's visible. Slide trigger, WinTech frame. Um, so the reason I wanted to bring this out is because we can see that the actual sight rail. Well, this isn't a very good comparison because this is a skirmish and this is a early Bushmaster, but we can see that the skirmish has no V notch right here. In the site, and then this book, these two Bushmasters actually both do. So they're both earlier unibodies, and by unibody I mean non removable barrel. And they both have that V notch in the site. So next in line. Thanks, Jack. So next in the lineup is another, this is a Diamond Dust anodized. Bush, line of side Bushmaster. Again, this one's a four drop, and uh, my bolt nose on this is actually missing, but and it's actually jammed up. But uh, this is a later style body. So when we compare the bodies here, let's see if I can find. There we go. All right. When I compare these two style bodies, I have the feeds directly lined up here, and we can see that the Bushmaster with the Diamond Dust and Dice Snub is actually a 90, a 1990 body. So it, that means that the body actually goes all the way back to the ASA here. And on this earlier unibody, it's, it's what I call standard Nelson spec, which means that, which means that it takes a valve body that is the same dimensions as a Nelspot 007. So you could take this valve and you could put it directly on a Nelspot 007. On this Bushmaster, you actually couldn't do that. Well, you actually could and it would work, but you couldn't take the standard Nelspot valve and put it on here because the body goes all the way back. So last up is uh, it's an item that I've been looking for for a while and I finally found a couple examples of this. This is a welded feed neck Bushmaster. And the welded feed neck Bushmasters were some of the earliest Bushmasters made in I think 1987 and in a moment here I'm going to bring up a scan by Tom Boyer that he has posted on old magazine old paintball magazines and we're gonna look at some of the details from that actual article by Randy Camilla where he details the actual welded feed neck Bushmasters and another couple unique things on this Bushmaster when you look at it right off the bat it's not super easy to tell that it's a unique setup but when you look start to look closer okay I'm gonna go back to my GoPro overhead here so when you start to look closer you can see that this body uses the standard kind of it's almost like a twist lock loctite feed neck where 
the way that they would assemble that is it would have threads that go all the way down into the breech and they would stick it into the breech screw it in the breech is threaded the feed neck is also threaded so the feed neck is actually male the breech is actually female and then you have your spacer right here so they would stick this direct feed nipple in here and screw it in thread it in with some loctite this piece stays static right here because this is just a spacer to cover your threads and then once it's locked once it's actually threaded in it is actually thanks jack let me look at my audio here okay i'm actually going to check my audio actually let me finish that thought so once they actually have it loctited and threaded in then they'll actually drill it out and drill straight through those threads and then it's anodized after that and the anodizing actually locks it together So, audio seems to be mostly okay. Everything else seems to be going all right too. Although, yeah, this is still working. It's great. So, now. Okay, so now that we've reviewed all these bodies, I'm going to take it back to this view. So now that we've reviewed all these bodies, we're going to look at a couple scans that I have brought up from Tom Boyer's old magazine scans. And uh, these are scans from the June 1990 APG. And in this APG, Randy Kamiya actually details the history of the line side Bushmaster and how Jerry Dobbins went from building a, the gun for his actual team to filling orders for Ross Alexander and actually selling the Bushmaster at the, the skirmish store. So all right, I'm going to switch on Chrome here and see if I can make this a little bit better, a little bit more visible. Okay, so uh, I don't even know how to do this. All right trying to blow this up. I'm going to just look at a couple specific quotes here. Okay, here we go. All right, so we have a, a brief history in this article by Randy Camilla. We have December 1985. First Bushmasters are built on Nelspot 007s. And then we have, and those are welded feed neck direct, uh, welded feed neck stock feed single pump arm board drops. So then in February 1986, Jerry Dobbins builds seven, let's see if we can see my cursor here, not really, but Jerry Dobbins builds seven of the single pump arm welded feed neck welded sight rail guns for the team and they are unanodized. And then, then we have December 1987, 48 Bushmaster guns with I believe welded feed necks and welded sight rails are made and so, so I'm gonna hide this now okay so of those 48 guns this is one of those so this is before they actually did, did the the feed neck actually screwed in so now I'm gonna bring back up my chrome and I want to just look at the last date here we have March 1988, 11-inch tournament paint guns were built. And I'm going to go to my next page because the article continues on the next page. Okay. So it says... Okay, so we continue on and it says that those were used to win... Uh, they were introduced at the New York Open, which is probably the Air Gun Open, 
and that's Jerry Braun's event in 19 in March of 1988 and then it continues okay it, it continues that Team Navarone used these paint guns to win first place at this event And then August 1988, the Bushmaster SI Deluxe with in interchangeable barrels was introduced. Okay, so that would be obviously the first example of a removable barrel Bushmaster. Let's see. I feel like there was something else I was missing here. Oh, okay. Uh, no, that's not it. Anyway. All right, so that concludes that little lesson. Now the next, the next item I wanted to go over was, let's see where it is, where is it right here? We got this Cool Pro mask. Here's the Cool Pro mask right here. Take off my Nell Spot hat, and I put on my Cool Pro. And uh, so here we go. This is the Nasty Boys Cool Pro mask. Benji actually wore this in one of our streams before, but I found an article detailing some of the history of it. So we're gonna take a look at that article after we actually take a look at the mask. So let's see, now we're on our GoPro. And let's see, we're gonna compare the Cool Pro to the GSX mask. So the mask on our right here is the actual GSS, GSX mask. And that's JT's first entry into the paintball mask market. And we can see that the difference between this GSX mask and a whippersnapper are the actual securing of the lenses to the frame with zip ties. Um, there might, another, okay, there is another difference as well. The, the top vented area and the, whoa, and I believe the bottom vented area down here, it's hard to see, but it's right below the eyes on the goggles, is actually a separate piece of plastic. It's black plastic, and that piece typically deteriorates. So probably in a matter of time, this mask will also start to deteriorate, which will be a shame. But uh, So if I was wearing it, that's my actual coverage right there. So we can see we're pretty much open on the side here. And that's why you would wear your like JT hood uh, or tiger stripe hood, which would have those hard ears. Those were typically worn with the early whippersnappers. Okay, so now back to the Cool Pro mask. So the Cool Pro mask was introduced later, and it was introduced by Nasty Boys, and they actually built them with different cutouts. We can see we have an area cut out in the actual wire. I'm going to switch back to the GoPro now. So we have an area cut out in the actual wire, flip it over, which the, the goggle frame actually fits into. We can see, when we look at the back here, the frame is sandwiched directly inside of that wire mesh mask. So they made different variations of the Cool Pro. I think they made them for the Scott mask and the, this is an X-Fire lens. So this Cool Pro assembly would be later, probably 92. But now let's look at a scan that I found, which tells us which tells us some of the story of the Cool Pro. And this was a scan from oh, it was from uh, Paintball News, I believe. And I'm not going to look up the date. I'll have to add the date later. But let's look at this Cool Pro scan. So here's my Cool Pro scan that I found. And let's see if I can move it around a little bit. Here we go. Okay, so this is kind of cool. I can actually place the Cool Pro right next to the actual scan. So Cool Pro mask and goggle system. The face shield system works as a complete goggle system when combined with Scott, Vents, or JT goggles. This is heavy duty coated wire mesh face shield available in camo or black. I guess this is the camo. It's spray painted green and black. Uh, molded soft ear protection is standard. Don't really have any soft ear protection, but maybe what they mean is 
actually taking, let's see, what side do I need to go to here? So maybe they mean taking a, one of the actual JT hard ears and placing them on the side here so that you actually have some ear protection here because you really just have like this serrated, uh, serrated, you know, metal. So, okay, finishing up here. Great for fields because of ability to be so quickly cleaned. Nasty Boys, Mr. Paintball, MSRP, or MSR it actually says, $55. So Mr. Paintball is, I think, in Escondido, and I'm not sure how Nasty Boys was associated with Mr. Paintball, but I guess there's some link there. If anybody knows how they were actually associated, that would be great if you could tell me about that. Uh, I do have some vents. Don't have them out here, though, Jesse. Uh, and I don't really want to go grab them now since it's probably take me five minutes to find them. All right, so let's see, I think I have another another thing I can go over. Oh yeah, so this shirt, shirt that I'm wearing is a Tomcat shirt and it says San Antonio, Texas paintball team. So I saw the shirt hanging up at Super Game and it was in a rack of shirts that Michael Carmen was selling. And I think he was selling it for $20. And I probably wouldn't have noticed it specifically had it not been for an article on the old paintball guns group that I saw. And okay, I'm going to move this around here a little bit. All right. So anyway, here's this article that I found. Or I didn't find it. I saw it on the old paintball guns group, and it's po this is a little write-up by Jay Skilling, and Jay writes, "Here's an old picture. I think this is shortly after I started my addiction, early 1983. Oil-based paint, 25 cents per ball, no pumps, no stick feeders, and bring your own safety glasses." And then he says he's standing third from the left, so I guess this is him right here. Uh, Although I don't know if my cursor is actually being brought up. Somebody comments on YouTube, dead ass. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean, but I'll take it. Now, all right, we're back on this picture. And as we scroll down more, let's see, we have Jay up here in the corner. He's at the Grand Canyon. And then as we scroll down more, we have some people tagged, and as we go down further, we can see we have Bill R. Tarvin, and he says, Old Tomcats Field in San Antonio, probably 1989 to 1990. So that's pretty cool. We have uh, some patches on his arms. As we go further down, this is what actually reminded me of this shirt when I saw it. This picture here that Kevin, po Kevin Foster posts actually has the Tomcats team. And they have their flag behind them with the Tomcat there. And as we go down a little bit further, we have some more pictures and we have their actual patch. So let's see if I can hide this. And we can see that the patch is the same as what's on the shirt. So I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna bring it up again. It is a pretty awesome patch. He has his little belt with his holster around him. If anybody has one of these patches that they wanna send me, feel free. Uh, now, let's see, what else did I bring out for this? I got an old Survival Games hat, which I bought a few weeks ago. I don't I think the GoPro is going to work. I'm going to just try it out. Oh, the GoPro is still working. So here we go. We can take a look at this and we can see the survival games. So this logo right here for the survival games is one of the one of the oldest logos that the survival games used. And uh, I don't know what year it is. Um, you would sometimes see this patch in like a circular it's like a circular patch and it has the pistol and it says survival games. So anyway, I thought that was kind of neat. I hadn't... Actually, no, I take that back. This isn't the oldest logo. 
I'm not sure when this actual logo date dates to, but it has to be before 86, because I think 85, 86 is when the Splatmaster was released, and this features a Nelson 007 on it. So it's gotta be 85, 86 or earlier. And we have a logo inside. It was made by, doesn't really say, but there's a number on it. I'll have to research that number, see if I can find a date for the hat company. And then let's see what else I got here. Uh, it's mostly everything. We have the Nelson hat I was wearing earlier, which is pretty neat. Let's see if my GoPro will go back on. It's going to take me a minute here to switch to the GoPro. But when it does go back on, we'll get a better look at this hat. Here we go. I think the GoPro's on now. And here we go. We're back on with the GoPro. And there we go. So Nelson Paint Company, 50 years of service. So I'm quickly going to Google in Chrome. Actually, you know what? I don't need that one to open. But I'm going to quickly Google in Chrome uh, Nelson Paint Company established. And that will give us the date for this hat. Oops. So... Looking up, I'm on the Nelson page, and I'm looking up when they were actually established. Started in the 1940s, so I don't know. I guess if it's 50 years of service, it'd be in the 1990s somewhere. So pretty neat. I guess it's from the 1990s. And that concludes our live stream of testing various equipment. You guys can feel free to give me some comments about how horrible this went. I don't think it went that bad compared to some of our other ones. Um, but I don't know. Maybe you guys think different. Anyway, thanks for watching. Man, how do I stop this?